So, I'd like to welcome everyone to the July 9th, 2020 meeting of the Burlington Conservation Commission. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th superseding uh, order of uh, uh, certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, and the Governor's March 15th, 2020 order. Uh, imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Town of Burlington Conservation Commission is being conducted through remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of, the, of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. A reminder that persons who would like to listen to or view this meeting while in progress may do so by tuning into the BCAT government access channel. Uh, the uh, the instruct instructions are being shown on the screen now. You can also contact us through the BCAT government meetings Facebook live feed, or you can even join the meeting over the phone at 408-418-9382. And the meeting number eight, and the meeting number is one two nine two four six eight zero six nine. To join the WebEx Live video conference, you click on the link on the Conservation Commission's meeting page, or on the Town of Burlington uh, town calendar. You would just go to the Conservation Commission meeting under July 9th and click on Agenda, and the link would be there. Or you can go to webex.com. Uh, to join the meeting, uh, and the meeting number is shown there if you'd like to do it by going to webex.com, and there is an ID, an access code, and a password to do this. New public hearings are open tonight but will not be closed so as to allow comments from those who are unable to access or might be uncomfortable with this technology. Comments and concerns regarding public hearings can be emailed to conservation at burlington.org before the next meeting on August 13th. Okay, so uh, the next uh, thing I will do is in a moment, I will call the roll call uh, and I will ask, uh, I will call on each person on the commission by name, either for discussion or for, by, for voting. Uh, all votes will be by roll call. Uh, the meeting is being recorded. So, um, and if you are an applicant or associated with a project, uh, please introduce yourself before speaking. All right, with that, uh, Don Bernstein, are you here? Yes, present. Gail Lima. Present. Indra Dev. Present. Bill Boyvin. Here. Jennifer O'Riordan. Present. Uh, Ed Loturco, I understand, is not present. I am here. Oh, you are here. Okay. Thank you for chiming in. <laughs> Just got back. All right. Well, your absence was keenly felt. Oh, uh, broken foot. That's what I've got. <laughs> Do you really? Oh, yes, dear. I really. All right. Those site visits can be treacherous. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Uh, Kent Moffat, I know he is not here. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, our administrator, John Keeley. Here. And our assistant administrator, Eileen Coleman. Here. All right. So, uh, thank you very much, folks. Uh, the first item on the agenda is uh, citizens time after the roll call. Uh, is there anyone here who would like to uh, say something that might not be on the agenda, but would like to be have a few minutes to talk about something? No. Okay. Uh, the item three on the agenda is the approval of minutes, June 25th, 2020. Uh, does anyone object to holding them? Nope. Any discussion? All right, could I have a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. Yeah. Second. 
Second, Phil. All right. Okay. All who are voting for the motion to approve the minutes, Don. Yes. Gail. Yes. Indra. Yes. Bill. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Ed. Ed. Can't hear you, Ed. Yes, can you hear me? I heard you, heard you now, got it, got it. And the All chair right. votes, yes, that's six, zero, zero. Thanks, Ed. Okay, the next item on the agenda is item four. It's a request for a certificate of compliance for the re and the release of surety for 24 Terry Ave, uh, the BAPA Corporation, DEP file number 122-621. Is there someone here for that? Hi, yes, Amy Geary with BAPA Corporation. All right, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Okay, so uh, if, in case you do not know, we, uh, uh, on Wednesday, we did a site visit uh, and we'll let, uh, uh, you don't have to do much for being here. All we have to do is we'll go to our administrator and ask for comments first, John. Okay, so this project was uh, an addition to a commercial building as well as the reconstruction of the parking lot with stormwater upgrades. Um, the, the project is done, the site looks stable, the installation of the uh, stormwater was all um, documented by the engineer who did weekly inspection reports and submitted them regularly. Um, there are a couple minor things um, on site. Some of the blueberries looked like they needed to be replaced. There was a little trash um that's basically it there was um there was a piece stone put between the um the curb and the um the edge of work which didn't wasn't shown in the plan um but nothing nothing was really shown in the plan so i guess we assumed it would be grass or mulch but um the piece stone i think will be fine some of it may migrate into the wetlands but um th those were the only issues we saw all right, is there any reason to hold up the certificate? No. All right, let's, uh, why don't we go to the commissioners? John, any comment? Uh, no comment. Gail? No. Indra? No. Bill? No comments. Jennifer? No comments. Ed? Comment. All right, and on the chair has no comment other than I thought, other than the few minor things that we noted that John Keeley mentioned. I didn't see, I thought the project looked like it was well done. Okay, so uh, if there is nothing further, could I have a motion to issue the certificate of compliance for the project of 24 Terry Ave, DEP file number 122-621? So moved, Ed. Okay, second. Second, Bill. All right, John, how do you vote? Yes. Gail. Yes. Kendra? Yes. Okay, we're getting a lot of static from, from one of the connections. Bill? From Gail. Uh, okay. Uh, Jennifer? Yes. Uh, Ed? Yes. Okay, I think that was a yes. Yes. Okay, and uh, the chair votes yes. It passes 600. Uh, how much was the uh, surety fund for? 15,000. All right. You uh, recommend full release? It's up to you. Um, there, there were a few minor things that, you know, they they were pretty minor. So, yeah, I, I suppose. Okay. Uh, is there anything uh, before we decide on it that we're asking them to do? So we there are some, some of the plantings that will need to be replaced. Um, the low bush blueberries in particular are probably maybe half a dozen of those that appear to be dead. 
and and trash trash pickup, but that should become a regular that should be a regular thing. I think there's still the snow story. The no dumping snow st sign is still has to be put up. All right, that's, so that's a minor thing. All right, so who is here from BAPA again? I, I hi, yeah, I am. So I can speak to those things. Um, so as far as the snow dumping sign, we actually ordered that last week. That was an oversight. I'm sorry. That will be up um, uh, this week. It'll be in. Uh, trash, no problem. We'll get all that taken care of. Blueberry bushes, I didn't know any of them were dying. Um, we've been having issues with the water ban. I don't know if that's why. Um, I They were just planted, so I'm sure I can talk to the landscaper about, you know, uh, some sort of solution because we, you know, we literally planted them within the last month, so. So this is Gail. So um, I don't know if there's access to the property. You know, I mean, they can be hand watered, like with a hose or that kind of thing, um, any at any time. So you just can't use the irrigation system except for on a you know Tuesday and Saturday. But with a hose, you can water them as long as they're holding the hose and not like putting the hose down and coming back in four hours. And those are low bush blueberries. They don't they don't take much water. Okay, so then I need to talk to my landscaper because I'm, I didn't know that and I'm sure that, um, you know, I can, um, we didn't notice they were dying. They were just recently planted, so. Yeah, okay. If John, if they need to be replaced, uh, would you would you generally refrain from planting in midsummer? Yes. Okay, so. It's tough time, tough time of year to transplant, definitely. All right, so. If uh, so, uh, Amy, do we have do the commission have your commitment to to replace them if needed? Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna we'll try to rehabilitate rehabilitate them first, and um, and like I said, I'll definitely talk to the landscaper, and it, it was our intention that they be sure you know, thriving. So, all right. So, unless there's an objection, then therefore, do I have a motion to release the full amount of the bond, fifteen thousand dollars? For the project at 24 Terry Ave, Vapor Corporation, DEP found them in 22-621. So moved, Indra. Okay, who's seconding? Second, Ed. All right, there's a motion on the floor for full release of the surety. Uh, Don, how do you vote? Yes. Gail? Yes. Uh, Indra? Yes. Uh, Bill? Yes. Uh, Jennifer. Yes. Ed. Yes. Uh, and and Ed. I did say yes. Okay, so one, two, three, and the chair votes yes. So that's seven zero zero. I think uh, I mis uh, miscounted last time. The last vote, couple of last votes. They should have been seven zero zero as well. We have seven members present. And yep, I have it. Okay, thank you. All right, so that passes. So I think you're all set. Thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Thank you, thank you for having me, thank you. All right, take care. You too. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda. Okay. All right, all right. Next on the agenda is a notice of intent that was filed by Kara and Ilak Imlak for the uh, installation of an in-ground swimming pool located at 3 Marjorie Road in Burlington. The proposed work would be within the 100-foot buffer zone to bordering vegetative wetlands pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40, which is the Wetlands Protection Act in Burlington Bylaw, Article 14. The commission will review all information relative to this application and thereafter may issue an order of conditions uh, and a Burlington wetland permit. Uh, this application may be viewed at the uh, Conservation Commission office, uh, or could be requested from the Conservation Commission office by uh, sending an email to conservation at burlington.org. All right, so are there, uh, is uh, the people from Free Marjorie, are you here? I see Eric is here. Yes, we're here. Sorry. Yes. All right. All right. Nice. Nice to see you. It was well. Uh, you may want to adjust, adjust the computer a little so we can see the top half of your face. Ah, there you go. <laughs> and, 
And All right. Kyle so is here as well for the uh, representing the applicant. And who was here? Kyle Cormier with Oxbow Associates representing All that. Right. Okay, Kyle, good to see you here. Uh, so uh, whoever is talking is uh, should do some introductions, uh, which have already been done, and should uh, like give a summary as brief as you would like. Hi, yeah, um, so the proposed project is a, a pool at the rear of the existing house uh, with a patio associated with it. Uh, all the storm water will be collected by a drain uh, that's in the patio area and then uh, will be infiltrated uh, with a infiltration system. Uh, there's also a proposed swell and grading uh, to capture any additional uh, runoff uh, and force it towards that swale. Um, and that will go towards the intermittent stream at the rear of the site, which we flagged A1 to A4. Uh, the stream's more of a drainage ditch than anything, uh, probably installed uh, when all these houses on Marjorie uh, were put in house lots. Um, all the work is outside of the 40 foot no structure that needs a permit. Um, there is a portion of the patio that is within the 20 to 40 foot and some of the grading as well as the uh, swale is within the 20 to 40. Um, the applicant proposes to do uh, some invasive management control within the zero to 20 foot, uh, as well as um, clean up any yard debris that is in there currently, um, which is some old firewood. Um, there's a trailer in there that he's gonna move. Um, and then, uh, I also, there was, this came up at the site walk. Um, there was a depression uh, roughly nearby the swale, west of the swale, uh, where the erosion control jets out. Um, I explored that area right after uh, the commission left. And I did a plot within the wetland and a plot in the upland. Um, the area of this is roughly 150 square feet. Uh, this was just capturing all the royal fern, cinnamon fern, and following the, the topo within that area. Um, the, the plants within the depression, uh, the herbaceous plants for royal fern, lance leaf, tiger lily, poison ivy, Virginia creeper, glossy buckthorn, and eastern a scented fern, and this was a five foot herbaceous plot. And I, I didn't do a uh, shrub and tree uh, layer mainly because it wouldn't really represent the wetland area that well because it would extend past this depression and include a lot of upland plants. Um, so I just did an herbaceous layer for each the the isolated depression and the upland. Um, so. There was two upland indicator species that were dominant within the depression and one wetland indicator plant that was dominant. Um, soils were more borderline uh, a 4-2 on the B layer. Uh, and then 12 to 24 inches is actually a 4-3. And I did not see any redoxomorphic features within the soils. Uh, and the upland plot uh, is more uh, jewel weed um northern wood sorrel uh glossy buckthorn and pennsylvania sedge and dominant plants were uh, wood sorrel and pennsylvania sedge uh, which there's one upland indicator plant uh, since pennsylvania sedge is not classified um, soils there are much more upland soils in the b layer uh, got a, a 3-2 in the first B layer, and then B1 layer was a 5-6, very bright orange uh, soils. Um, the fact alone that this area is 150 square feet um, below the 500 square foot threshold for the isolated, I think is uh, enough just to classify it just as non-regulatory. Um, but I'll leave that up to the commission um, and their thoughts. Um, other than that, I think that's a, a good overview of the site. 
Okay, good. Thank you, Kyle. Yep. Uh, uh, John or Eileen, do you have uh, uh, comments for the commission to hear? Um, I don't see my video, so I'm not sure if you guys can see me anymore. Um, the, the, Kyle described it pretty well. Uh, we all we've we've all been to uh, Marjorie before. We know this channel pretty well. Um, the, there's sort of varying amounts of wetland on the on those properties. Um, Kyle had just um, marked off the bank, which was reasonable. Um, everybody, a few people noticed those um, indicator wet, wetland indicator species yesterday, but I'm satisfied that with what he says, with that just being a very small uh, patch of wetland soils. Um, that he, I'm not sure if he mentioned this, but they're pulling the shed forward just a little bit to be a bit further out of the no disturb. Um, as well as putting down, oh, they've also um, done a stormwater analysis and they're going to um, infiltrate all the stormwater runoff from the pool. So I thought that was pretty pretty reasonable for a pool. Okay, all right. Uh, let's um, let's go to the commissioners and see if there's either comments or questions. Uh, Don, do you have any comments or questions? Uh, no comments. Okay. Uh, Gail. Uh, so you mentioned the invasive removal. Um, are they, you know, is there someone that knows what they're doing going to be doing that in terms of uh, knowing which plants to remove and how far in they go and so forth? Yeah, um, so I mean, our office is more than capable, but it's ultimately dependent on what the uh, applicant wants to do. Um, I'm sure there would probably be a condition that could be put uh, maybe about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, our office, we have a licensed herbicide applicator. Um, so we're more than capable of uh, handling it. We can also manually pull, especially garlic mustard. Um, that's more of a manual pull um, type plant. But John, uh, is, I'm sorry. Uh, Uh, we can't hear you, Gail. Um, uh, John or Eileen, uh, with the uh, buckhorn, is that kind of a routine to do the herbicide? Are you just applying it to the stump? Is that the idea? To the herbicide on the uh, buckhorn? Uh, would you use it on anything else besides the buckhorn? Uh, there's also, uh, yeah, so usually you, you cut and then uh, apply on the, 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 the stump that's there. Uh, yeah. to, really, to really kill it um and there's also a uh, winged ominous out there as well burning bush um right. so that'd be another thing that we could target and so uh, you mean you can actually just cut out uh you can uh, unionimus is not that hard to remove without herbicides in my yard that shows up in the woods and stuff like that um i don't know if uh, john or eileen has uh, any input about the uh, how much herbicide is used and so forth. And also, it will be a condition about not uh, um, using kind of you know, heavy equipment or anything like that to make your stones. So they're also taking some trees down, aren't they? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, there's five trees that are being removed. I forgot to mention that. So. Uh, well, they'll definitely tree. have some equipment in to get the trees down. So I'm not really sure about the, the buckthorn. Well, to take the trees down, though, they don't, I mean, they can leave the stumps. They don't need to pull those out. There's no reason to pull them out. I mean, I assume they're taking the trees down to you know, have more light. They don't have uh, more light over the pool. Yeah, exactly. Well, in terms of the trees, our intention was to remove those five trees and make that part of the lawn. Um, and I believe that that drawing shows that the, the existing lawn would almost just square off. So we were intending on removing the stumps as well in that area. Twenty foot. Is it? Can you say that again, please? 
So how, that area, it, remind me please uh, how close it is to the wetland line? For the tree uh, to be removed? Yeah, the, the closest tree is pretty much right on the 50 foot buck zone line. The closest to, okay. Okay, you all set, Gail? Yes. All right, Indra? Yes. Uh, I see the infiltration system. Did you design the infiltration system taking the runoff from the deck only? Uh, I think the so the engineer designed it to collect the rainwater from the patio and uh, the pool area. Okay, and how it is going to the is it a storm scepter? What are you using that? Uh, so there's a drain uh, towards the left side of the pool. I think it's a five inch drain, and oh, it's okay. all sloped towards that drain. And then it's going through a PVC pipe underneath the patio to the east, and uh, going to the infiltration system. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Okay. And uh, Bill. Uh, yes. Uh, was there any kind of a test pit done to show that the infiltration will work, that the groundwater is not too high? Yes. Uh, it's on the plan, actually. Um, okay. Just, just stop sharing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. And then my other question is, the five trees coming out are five healthy Hardwoods, are you, any plans to uh, plant trees in compensation? Uh, so our only compensation right now is the invasive management control and removing uh, the yard waste within the 20 foot and also moving the shed forward uh, closer to the, the pool area and outside of the 40 foot no structure. Okay, well those trees are not in the, uh, do not disturb or anything, so. We really can't insist on compensation, I don't think, can we? The, the, what you mentioned is compensation. I mean, I thought that was more for you know, kind of actually doing um, work in the protected area. Okay. Not, uh, well, no, I agree with you, Bill. I, I, I think that the, that I don't view that as compensation for removal of trees. It's just uh, compensation for doing work in the research area. All right, uh, Jennifer. Uh, no comments at this time. Ed. Still, it's only because of the graphic, I guess. I see the shed behind the trees. Aren't they parallel to the trees right now? Um. If it's being moved forward from its present position, you'd be in the pool. Uh, it would be moved forward and to the left uh, to avoid the, the, the pool. <clears throat> I just don't understand how the shed got so far behind the trees. So this, I think that there's a discrepancy on this drawing. That shed is the current condition existing. And I believe that shed is supposed to be on that 101 mark and that little alcove there. That would make more. That would make more sense. <laughs> and that was something we I didn't we didn't catch and we it came up yesterday and uh, we have no problem moving that forward to get it out of that no structure line. Essentially, the front of the shed becomes the future rear of the shed. Okay, that makes more sense now. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Ed? Nope. That's good for me. All right. All right. Uh, the only thing I'm wondering about uh, is uh, uh, will, will does the contractor say he has enough room to actually uh, dig out all this pool? There'll be an awful lot of dirt that's going to come out of that hole. And you have an erosion control line that's right along the 100 foot uh, contour. Uh, and uh, um, he can't go beyond that erosion control. Uh, is is that is that going to be a problem? Because he's going to have to stockpile a lot. Is he, or is he going to put it right on a truck as he builds it? Uh, the last I spoke with him, 
we, he was aware that we're going to have some conditions we're going to have to work around. So whatever we need to do to meet the board, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, if we have to truck it right out, that's not a problem. Um, well, so. the only the only reason the only reason for trucking it right out is is if one it saves a little bit of time if they can arrange that a little bit of logistics, but it saves it saves time of stockpiling and then taking the stuff out of the stockpile and putting it in the truck. And the other is you need enough. The main reason is I think you're going to need enough room. I'm not sure you have enough room to put all the dirt. Okay. Uh, but you know that's a that's for a discussion. I mean, all all you as the homeowner have to do is point out that we have an erosion control line that you're not supposed to go beyond, and he has only so much room to work with to dig out and stockpile. So you might want to pose the question whether he can arrange it so he has. You know, a couple of trucks going, one filling, and the other delivering, so to speak. Sure. Or ask and him if ask him if he needs it. If we were to continue the erosion control out through the front of the property, can we stockpile in the front yard, or is that not something we can get into? Uh, John. I know if they put erosion controls in the front, they could stockpile in the front. Okay. Just about to say the same thing. Sorry. Yeah, that sounds that sounds right. Okay, I don't have anything else other than that. Uh, so, is there anyone in the audience uh, for this project at Three Marjorie that would like to have a question or a comment? Is there anybody potentially online that might be interested in this project? Okay, the record should show that no one responded to that question. All right, so uh, um, uh, what is the action item list? Uh, John or Eileen, did we have anything that we're asking for before the next meeting? I don't think so, other than clarifying where the shed is going on the plan, if it really is moving forward, because I thought from our discussion yesterday that it was just moving forward by about 18 inches. But okay. from, what Eric, from what Eric said, it's going forward by several feet. I don't plan to show that no problem. Okay. So, Larry, um, just something that should be or um, added to the uh, the conditions would be uh, that if they're going to use herbicide to uh, remove invasives, that that should be applied by a professional. Okay. All right. Uh, are there any other comments? Okay. The uh, the next meeting uh, will be uh, August thirteenth. At that time, I think we can close the hearing, and unless someone sees an objection to that, we'll close the hearing and issue the permit at that time. Okay. Great. Thank you. Right, you, should, you should do a roll call to continue. All right. Okay. Uh, is there a motion on the floor to continue this hearing? Okay. All right. So second. Ed, second. All right. Uh, Don, how do you vote to continue? Yes. Gail. Yes. Indra. Yes. Bill. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Ed. Yes. Chair votes yes. Seven zero zero. All right, people. We'll see you on uh, August thirteenth. Great. Great. Thank you. Appreciate your time. All right. Thank you, folks. Have a good evening. You as well. All right. We're on item six. It's a continued public hearing for a Burlington Wetland Bylaw Permit, one twenty seven Bedford Street. Kong K. Tang and Vanden Ray. It's for grading, landscaping, a driveway extension, and buffer zone restoration. Okay, uh, people here for that. Please. Yes, I'm here. Maureen Harold, North Environmental, and the property owners are here as well. Okay, nice to see you all. All right, uh, would you uh, care to make a few comments, uh, Maureen, before anything else gets said? Sure. So um, at the last Conservation Commission meeting, the commission had asked for some changes to the plan, and that has been done. 
Um, one of the requests was to extend the infiltration trench along the easterly property line. Um, the trench has been extended up to the 96 contour. Uh, another comment was um, provide additional tree and shrub plantings along the infiltration trench that runs down um, from the corner of the driveway towards the wetland area. We added um, some trees and shrubs along that infiltration trench. Um, another request was to extend, extend the chain link fence to the easterly property line. Um, if you recall, uh, the chain link fence ended at the retaining wall. So we have now extended the chain link fence to the easterly property line. Uh, another request was to provide an operation and maintenance plan for the infiltration trench that has been provided and that is in your packet as well. Um, another suggestion that came up from the commission was the installation of pervious pavement for the proposed parking area that's in front of the dwelling and that's outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, I spoke to my client about that and they would really prefer to do asphalt in this area. Um, and I think, I think the plan accommodates it because of how the parking area is graded onto the existing paved driveway. Uh, any additional runoff will be picked up by that extended infiltration trench. Um, and lastly, I know we had a number of uh, butters present at all the meetings concerned about flooding. Um, so I did some research just on the general neighborhood, um, just to see what it, what it looked like many years ago. Uh, and I had submitted these plans with the package as well. But essentially what's interesting enough is that there's actually existing drainage easements that go along Bedford Street beside the Callahan's property onto the Brady property. And this plan is dated from 1957. So obviously it was part of the neighborhood, it was part of the whole development of the property. I also found another plan from 1957 from when Pleasant Street was actually developed. And what's interesting enough about that is that there was actually a stream that ran, that apparently ran by the Callahan property and it has a name by present book. And they actually essentially got rid of that stream and relocated it through the drainage easements. So that my intent in just showing this to the commission is just to provide them with the information that this area has always been wet. Um, you know, evidence of the stream itself uh, behind these properties. And I can open it up to the commission um, with any questions. All right, we'll get there in a minute. The order in which we'll do this is we'll go to both Eileen and John and see if they have any comments. Then we'll go to the commissioners to see if they have questions or comments. Uh, then we'll go to uh, people who may be here in the audience, uh, perhaps neighbors uh, on the subject. Okay, John or Eileen, do you, we did a site walk. Would you please comment on what we saw? Okay, so we did the site walk. We first went to 127 Bedford. Um, Everybody had been out there before. Uh, there wasn't much new information gathered at that site. We did look at um, where the proposed um, trench for the driveway was going and where the proposed new driveway addition was going. Um, but then we went over to Pleasant um, and saw saw remnants of the old drainage easement where there's a portion of a swale and a catch basin uh, pipe um, that obviously was what took that took that drainage easement and the water drained in there. And we found that an area that had been inundated um, a year ago, a little over a year ago when um, we were out there, now has a sport court on it. So, so it's, it's clear that a big part of the problem on 127 and indeed on 125 is the fact that all that water was going towards that catch basin on um, the Pleasant Street lot, and now it can't because the sport court was built there. Um, and the, the situation on 125 and 127 
cannot be resolved unless that flow is restored um, the way it the way it was designed um, indeed when the easement was drawn up and as as it probably was until fairly recently actually okay uh, let's see first what the other commissioners have to say that they're on the site visit uh, and then uh, I think we'll open it up for a more free-flowing discussion uh, okay Don uh, yeah, um, basically, um, just uh, building on what John said, uh, we can see uh, a variety of uh, issues that are contributing to the water situation now. And uh, uh, with that in mind, I, I don't know what the next steps would be, but I think that uh, we should transcend all three properties. Uh, Don, I think we're losing part of your connection. We're not hearing you very well. Okay, can you hear me better now? Yes. Yeah, I uh, just saying that um, amplifying what John had to say, uh, there are three different properties contributing to the uh, to the water issue. Uh, maybe the most egregious is the uh, 127 with the lack of um, trees now. But uh, yeah, I think it, it is. It's, it appears to be more than um, one uh, lot that, that is contributing. All three may be very well contributing. So I okay. Think. Okay. Uh, uh, if you're done, Gail. Um, yeah. So I, I think the uh, problem at this property, the plus the property, the property behind it, with the the paved area is clear in that back uh, corner that there are cattails growing there, that's wetland that actually extended beyond um, both sides of the fence. And um, it's, uh, I mean, that water used to flow through there and go to the property behind it, but um, now it's, uh, um, it's impervious and so it's, it's going to flood. All right, uh, Indra. Uh, nothing at this point. Bill? Uh, yes, uh, obviously it, it is a wetland has been for a long time. Um, I was on the property at 125 Bedford Street and could see it appeared to me that where the previous wetland boundary was that now the, the lawn it expanded and some of the lawn is now spongy and wet as well. Um, of the three properties, in my opinion, that the 125 Bedford Street is is just a victim of this increased water, whereas 127 and uh, Bedford and 13 Pleasant Street, both properties are causes of this increase in wetland uh, size and likely equally at, uh, at cause. Um, 127, because of cutting down the trees, there were some 60 something trees cut down and I, I just looked up some numbers today and one mature, healthy oak tree can expire 250 gallons a day. So if you are cutting down 60 trees, now they weren't all healthy oak trees, but even if it was the equivalent of four mature oak trees, that's a thousand gallons of water a day that is now sitting on the ground instead of being sucked up through a tree. Um, and on the other side of the fence, on uh, 13 Pleasant Street, there's obviously been tree cutting done there as well. I mean, there's a lovely tree house attached to three stumps that would have been, in my opinion, just as lovely attached to three healthy hardwood trees that it looks like it was at one time. Uh, so all those cutting is, is eliminating thousands of gallons of water a day being expired. Um, and the paving on 13 Pleasant Street has had a double factor. Number one, it's introduced a bunch of impervious area now that is increasing runoff. And then it basically acting as a dam, preventing the function of that, um, uh, the, 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 the flow that existed before from the drainage easement. So, and one thing that I find particularly, I don't know, irritating is that 
the the there was representation from 13 Pleasant Street at the initial hearing on this in January. Uh, so they're obviously aware of a wetland issue and that cutting trees is a factor and that drainage is a factor. And it was after that time that they went ahead and put in the paving anyways without even pulling a permit, you know, from conservation. So uh, they were obviously well aware that there was an issue there. So to me, uh, there's been significant violation on 13 Pleasant Street as well, which needs to be addressed. Um, so I think an enforcement order is merited for Pleasant Street as well. And they, they should come forward with a plan to restore the flow that was occurring uh, via the drainage easement on their property previously. That's all I have. Okay, uh, Jennifer, and Jennifer, anything further on this? Uh, no, I was unable to make the site visit, um, but did do a drive by on my own and I definitely concur um, with the other commissioner's comment. All right, Ed. Right in concurrence with what was said, and the only other thing I would add to is that drainage um, area that is at least three to three and a half feet deep from the grade level sure would propose something that could easily be corrected to get to it. And then things would pretty much be natural on the far as the way the water would run off. It had a great place to drop down to. So that's the only additional comment. Yeah, I'll I'll just uh, uh, I'll just say in general that I agree with uh, Bill's uh, comments uh, that the Callahan property is the victim here. Uh, I don't see how I don't I don't see any evidence of how they've contributed to the water on their property. Um, I think that even if uh, the the property on one twenty seven works as proposed without some some remedial action on the part of 13 Pleasant Street, uh, certainly the Callahans are, are going to have in, going to have water remaining. And the uh, uh, the property at uh, the it may actually the, the flooding on 127 may just simply continue and begin to build up uh, because there's no outlet for it. Uh, and I think, John, did you say that there was wetlands in the area, things that would have been in designated wetlands where the sport court was? Did you say that to me previously? So I didn't say it was ever designated wetlands, but we did a site visit um, last year and the, the, the wetland clearly went onto that property. I, there are pictures of me with water up to my knees on the, the 13 Pleasant property. On the location of the sport court? Right. I see. Mm. So it is it is a likely uh, violation in other words, is what you're saying. Right. Okay. Well, uh, we can open this up, but before we open it up for further comments, let me just say in in uh, matters like this where there is uh, a uh, a property that has had a violation, uh, the easiest way to to uh, for us to deal with it from an enforcement point of view is to enter into a discussion with you folks and uh, at 13 Pleasant and see if uh, you're willing to generate a plan. And then we uh, once at some point we would send you an enforcement letter. It would be a friendly enforcement letter because you would have agreed that this is what you would like to do and propose to the commission. And if it seems like that the commission and the staff think this is the right thing to do, then uh, uh, you would essentially get a friendly enforcement letter and with an agreed upon timeline to take care of it. That's one way to do it. Obviously, there are uh, more strict measures of enforcement that can be gotten to, but uh, usually we don't pursue that in the first instance. Uh, so uh, with that as sort of the preamble, uh, would uh, anybody who is abutting this or in, uh, interested in this project like to make a comment? Before you do, just simply say who you are, and re even though we probably know you by now, <laughs> repeat, your, repeat your address uh, <laughs> so we have it for the record, and then you can start speaking for as long as you need. Hi, uh, my, I'll go first. Um, Mike Callahan, 125 Bedford. Thanks for seeing us 
again, I, I, I feel like uh, we know each other well. Um, <laughs> I did have one question uh, to Maureen. Um, so, you know, and the commission. So the runoff, the proposed driveway, they, that they're, they're going to add more asphalt. Is there any consideration to run that infiltration all the way up to the sidewalk to, to catch and direct? I know in the proposed, the revised plans, there is not, but um, I was wondering if that was considered. In the sidewalk, the walkway around the house. So they, they front, I think the proposed driveway is not to have an infiltration trench run up, and we think it run off the bottom of the driveway. Um, that's something that we could consider right now beside the driveway right there is a nice lawn area that would catch it. Um, so I'm not sure how much more the infiltration trench could do. Um, again, we're going to be putting in an infiltration trench if the commission finds that that's appropriate. I, I don't think it's a big deal to extend it. Um, we wouldn't extend it to the sidewalk, though. We would extend it to the property line. So it would be to the property line. Was that up to the sidewalk as well? Right up to the sidewalk. All right, we're getting a lot of feedback. Can I ask everybody but Maureen to uh, mute? I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. Oh, I said, would that go up to the sidewalk because their fence goes up to the sidewalk? It goes right up to the sidewalk. So that's what I was, that's what I was wondering. Is that their property line there? Oh, I see. Yeah, we could we could run it up that way. If the commission thought it was appropriate, we could. Again, that area's lawn, um, any type of runoff would be catched by the lawn. I'm not convinced it's necessary, but again, we're putting it in. If the commission feels it's necessary, we can extend it up. So another question, um, I didn't get into the schematics of the drawings, but um, so I, in the previous uh, hearing meeting right before us, it was talk, they had talk about the size of the infiltration trench. I, I feel like it was, larger in the pool scenario than, than what is proposed on the plan. I thought I saw a four inch info. I don't know what the standard is. I, I don't, you know, like what's appropriate. I'm just asking the question. Sure. So I can answer that question. So on the previous plan, they actually had a low point in the pool patio area to catch the runoff and they directed it underground into um, an infiltration chamber type system. Um, so it's more in, uh, probably more impervious area with the pool deck. With this, we're trying to fix an existing problem. So what makes more sense, rather than ripping up the existing driveway, creating some sort of inlet, putting in an infiltration chamber underground, the easiest and, and the best way to treat it is through an infiltration trench. So essentially that will alleviate your drainage problem. You know, unfortunately the builder constructed the driveway with these grades to run off onto your property. So we're just trying to help you to alleviate the drainage issues. No, I, I really appreciate it. Um, I, I heard previous talks of, of this easement, drainage easement. You know, has the has the town considered the, like the potential for for the drain to be blocked or that easement besides the sport court? Um, is, is there anything? I, I don't know how those run. Or has, I guess to the commission, is, is that is there a blockage of the drain? Is there a blockage from support? that map that other we... than the sport? Court? Yeah, from the map that Maureen provided us, is there a block? Could there be a blockage of the drain that could definitely help alleviate everything too? No. I'm, I'm I'll not try to answer. 
Go ahead, John. We could ask, we could ask the Department of Public Works. I, I haven't talked to them about it. Um, so I, I can check with DPW. I mean, if, it would help, if that would help, that would be, because I mean, as, as everybody said, you know, basically we're kind of the dumping ground for all these yards meeting in our, our, our little valley of a backyard. So, and the cutting down the 66 trees definitely hasn't helped us in the past couple of years. So if there's anything, you know, that can be, you know, fit, easily assessed and fixed, that would be really helpful to us. Because our, we have three small kids in our backyard is not really even usable as you as the people that came to our house saw you can't even go down past the uh like the little circle of mulch it's all it's all wet there's even frogs back there i mean in in the grass so i think that's all we have at this time <laughs> larry you're muted all right i'm unmuted now all right so uh, is there anyone else uh, that would like to uh, enter the discussion? Yeah, we would actually, Larry. My husband was gonna speak a little bit about, because I know John has vi visited out here and it's great that there's been a lot of site visits and we presented some historical view points from the um, neighborhood being built here, but now it seems like it's being a little piecemeal and, and kind of made into what it is now. Um, so my husband was going to provide a little vantage point um, of, of where this, and we still have that flooding back here, regardless, it's on top of the sports court. It's the same exact that it was before. Um, so if you want to kind of talk about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, because everyone, you know, I'm sure a lot of you are Burlington residents for years and have lived here for however many years, but this may be particularly new to you. I am not new to this house. I've lived here for 42 years and have never had water in my backyard. Once they took their trees down, I, we weren't even living here. There was no sports court. There was nothing, just a framed house here. And there was a giant three, four foot puddle back there, which John, I think you said you were here wading in your boots in. When you were waiting your boots, there was no sports court. But at the same time, that was never there to begin with back in the day. I, I used to build forts where that, bar, where that water is now. I don't know, Kerry and you guys, if you say after the sports court, it's gotten worse, which I understand the sports court was done aside, which that's a whole nother issue. But all I know is someone, after the trees were down, there was a water puddle there that had never been there before. We went to conservation pointed out this to you guys and and they said it was like a slap on the wrist to them it wasn't it was never really it never went further and now here i am defending what's going on where i went to you guys first and just to clarify the water is still there in summertime it's right when you guys came out it's dry but we have that the same yeah you can't use that sports court in the month of march and april the it's same exact it still exists there's no there's no real difference and um and we're the low point of this whole thing. And I mean, obviously water's gonna run downhill and it's going and it's gonna stop at the lowest point. And it just, it didn't do that in the past. And like, like I said, I've been here for 42 years. I have neighbors that can attest to it. Yeah, both of our neighbors. Our neighbor next door, she's been here since the fifties. She's gotten water in her backyard, never had water in her backyard. So we just wanted to present that finding because it seems like all the piecemeal stories are being put together tonight and the sports court, because it's a newer thing, is caught it's you're saying it's potentially causing more backflow onto the Callahan's which I don't know if, if that is the case and um William did present something earlier about the oak trees and how much water that they actually do do take in and to clear cut something and you know we're forgetting about those violations so let's just not forget about that this water has been created in the past couple of years and we have not seen this before so that's kind of what the focus of this this has been and um we, you know we are downhill to this if anything more of this the new project anything new here is going to be coming continuously to our backyard we still have that water we and, still have the same issue and also before anyone points out yes we did take trees down but we went to conservation beforehand and the reason we took down the amount of trees that we did is because we knew that we could I don't like to be able to see right into my neighbor's backyard. I wouldn't have done that. I knew that they weren't supposed to take those down. And we had moved out. We weren't living here at the time when they took them all down. And a buddy of mine was driving by and said he could see our backyard from Bedford Street. I said, that's impossible. They're not supposed to have done that. 
So I wouldn't have taken all my trees down because I just like, I like privacy as well as it soaking up the water. So we just wanted, we wanted to just acknowledge that first. And then we, you know, with the new plans here, I don't know if there's any, anybody that wants to provide anything on that, but I want to make sure that it's clear. There's a lot of different stories being piecemealed here and there's a lot of history. Um, and we don't know the histories, you know, um, about this drainage pipe and this easement. And that was one thing that Mike, the same question to kind of piggyback on that. Is there anything, you know, from the visit here, it was kind of brought up that potentially the storm drain could be um, clogged and can we work with the town? Is that one of the first steps to see if, if that is a new issue and did it get clogged in the last two years? That was somebody's theory um, during the site visit that it potentially could have been clogged um, within the last two years and, and causing all this water that never existed on the Callahan's or on the Brady's. Um, so that was one comment, you know, and I know, John, you said that that's something we can look into. Is that, what is the step that we can take for that to look into that? So I, I will just reach out to the uh, town engineer in the uh, DPW, I'll find out. Okay. And I guess the other, just looking at from the perspective of the plans, we have an engineer that took a look at it from both a butter standpoint and a few concerns that we want to put out there. Um, you mentioned some more trees were going to be along the side there. And that was one of his first concerns based on what we just heard from how much water each day was being absorbed by these trees that were cut down and to have just trees being only six trees on the on the plan. I don't know how many additional and what the size is going to be, but they're only three to four um, feet in height, and that's not even going to be the, the height of the wall. Um, so we would like to see a proposal of some more vegetation being put back there because the, the caliber on those is only a half inch, um, and they're not even as tall as the wall. So that was one one recommendation from an engineer looking at it from a um, from our perspective. And also um, the drainage from this new fill, there's gonna be a significant amount of fill that's gonna come in and grade off that um, property there. And where is that going to be um, draining to now? Can, can we show where that is gonna be um, drained off of the wall? Where is that gonna be captured, the new, the new um, offflow? So that was that was one. The, pretty much, those are the points that we wanted to bring up in terms of the plan. It's it's really just the the vegetation height and size, and the quantity. Okay, Maureen, do you have a comment on the wall? The water that runs off of there, once it's vegetated, it won't be quite as much, but it will be have some grass that will water will run off towards that wall, and then what happens? So, um, Eileen, I don't know if you can bring up the plan, but there's actually a detail of the wall on the plan. And it shows a four inch diameter um, pipe outlet at the end of the wall. Um, it's on the left hand side of the plan when you bring it up. So that would be down by the 20 foot no disturb. So right in front of you is the detail there. I can't see it. So there's a drain pipe along the wall. Right. And it's okay. it's going to that's where the drainage is going to collect and it's going to outlet into the 20 foot no disturb. Right. Okay. So it basically adds to the area behind the wall. Correct. Right. That's typically how a wall works. The water is collected and moved. Okay. Uh, oh, so it's so it's graded in the same direction as it currently is. It'll just be less steep because of the fill. So the, the pitch will be in the same direction towards the wetlands. Right. But it'll be but it'll be a flatter slope because of the fill. Correct. Yes. That's correct. So therefore, not as much water will run off as when it has a slope, John. Is that what you're saying? Right. Plus, it'll be vegetated. Right now, it's pretty much bare ground. With you know, with some stuff is growing in there, but even lawn would absorb more than what's out there now. Do you guys monitor the type of fill that is being brought in? Because it's a significant amount, and where it's coming from, the source. 
so to let the commission know, this is going to be clean fill. Um, there's a young family here. They're not going to bring in fill with bricks or asphalt or anything of that nature. This is going to be clean fill. That's a re generally a requirement of our order of conditions anyway. All right, we've heard from, uh, are there any other neighbors uh, in the area that would like to comment? Or butters. All right, are there any commission members who would like to have follow-up comments as part of the discussion? Uh, Bill, anything further? I'm just, one of my questions is the original drainage easement uh, from the 50s, you know, what does that mean? Was it just a, a ditch or was there actually a pipe involved? And, you know, is it, uh, what was the original structure and how did it function? I think that would be an important piece of information in order to uh, try to return its function. So when I did this research, I was doing it obviously at City Hall and um, I, I would like to get more plans to see exactly what it is, but it appears to be just an open drainage channel at that time that flows into that area. Again, these plans are from 57 and it's it's what I found at the time. And, and again, my intent was just to show the commission that this area has always been wet. There was a stream here, you know, so. To, to me, when I, when I looked at that information, uh, Maureen, I, I, it said to me that Apparently it was intended that water get out of that area and for any water that was coming in. And we're on this project, of course, we're trying to address and attenuate any water that is going in to the maximum extent, given that so many trees were cut on 127. And there's no question on 127 that cutting all those trees, which are naturally take up water, was an important component. However, uh, Equally so, and, and that if the water can't get out, removal of trees at 13 Pleasant, also maybe not as many, would have the same effect. Uh, the inability of the water to go in an open drainage, uh, uh, you know, a, uh, uh, some type of a swale channel that would feed into the, that would look like it was meant to feed into the uh, catch basin. If you can't do that now, it's in my view, you know, you may not want to hear it, but I think it's contributing in a significant way. Uh, so uh, I think we have things we're dealing with the water contributing to the wetlands, but I think that the water can't get out and I'm not saying it can't, but it looked to me like that's the case. I think, you know, almost need to have someone uh, check whether the water, the, the inlet to that, that area is uh, blocked in some way. And if once the water is collected, can it get out and around the, the sport court into the, into the uh, if that was the way the easement intended it to go, then fixing it might cure a lot of problems. And then just like, like to point out uh, in my former life as a regulatory affairs officer, uh, we used to have uh, a philosophy, voluntary compliance is always the easiest way to achieve a solution. So, you know, rather than anybody being forced to do anything, uh, if people can get some more information and come up with a plan on how to re return the flow to what the original development design was, uh, it would be the best solution. And and actually, one of the least cost things you can do is probably a drainage swale. Right. I'm not saying that's what you should do, but it looks like that might be what anybody who's qualified would look at it and say, gee, you just need a drainage swale and that would help cure the problem. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, any further comments at this time? Uh, what what I heard for action items is that, John, you're going to talk to uh, the DPW about the easement and whether the uh, inlet to the easement might be blocked. Uh, is there anything more on the property for 127? Uh, 127. Uh, Bedford Street. Anything more we need from them? Uh, Carrie, did you have? I think if you get something. So from the map that Marilyn provided us, that that little stream or whatever is put the front of our yard is totally gone, and it's not even on our own survey for our house. And 
I mean, the water has been going on way before anything happened at the property abutting us, behind us. This has been going on set for two and a half years now. And are you muted? It's frustrating. That's all. All right. Okay. Uh, so uh, let me ask the Brady, are you willing to look at, after you get some information, are you willing to look at whether uh, conveying the water into into that catch basin might be helpful? Are you, are you willing to do that perhaps? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're looking into any option. And again, for us, I mean, Everybody here that's not been here again talking about how this water's been here forever. If it had been, I wouldn't be here talking to you guys. If it had been, what would I care? If I wouldn't even be talking right now. I mean, that's my point that I want to make. But yes, I would like to get rid of it because again, it wasn't here before. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like not only is it in the interest of your neighbors, but from what you're saying is it's in your interest because I'm sure you don't like having your uh, sport court all wet and stuff. Right. Yes. Correct. So it sounds like it's in sort of the mutual interest of everyone involved. All right, so um, I guess, uh, uh, you know, please stay in touch with our office, our administrator, uh, and he'll tell you what DPW says, and perhaps some discussions will result in, in the next step for, for you folks on that. That would be great if you could do that for us. Okay, uh, John, is there anything else uh, that 127 needs in order to close at the next meeting on August 13th? No, there was just the discussion about uh, like bringing the swale up closer towards the road, but I think that was it. All right, so uh, can we resolve that before the meeting so this can close at that time, uh, Maureen? Sure. I mean, what's the pleasure of the commission? Do you think it's necessary to extend that infiltration trench up? I'm willing to do that. I do think that, you know, there is a nice patch of lawn area there that catches any type of driveway runoff. I personally don't think it's necessary, but um, if the commission feels that it's necessary, we can do it. You know, so when I was, it was there, Maureen, it was after a, a rainy uh, day or some rain. Uh, when we were there, and uh, I didn't notice that the grades would promote water to the left before the infiltration. In other words, I think I'm agreeing with you. If anything, I thought I saw some micro grading low spots at the bottom of the driveway, which then overflowed and 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 uh, headed down towards uh, the corner there uh, of the driveway. But uh, I, and I think. I honestly think the infiltration, the way you have it, is more than sufficient. But if anyone's free to object, if they don't think so. Uh, I agree with you, Larry. What, what I saw when I was there, it, it had just previously rained significantly, and there was clear sediment flow across the driveway, which just went across the paved area and directly to where those temporary sandbags are. Um, I think the trench should cover the paved driveway Covering the grass is not really going to do much because there's not going to be flow there. Right. Right. Anyone else want to contribute to it? This is it. I would concur with that because we even marked it. I made a foot mark where the water actually would break to head downward. Everything to the left was clearly lawn. Right. Right. All right. So um, I think uh, you heard the sentiment of some commissioners, Maureen. Okay. Um, uh, I, I I haven't heard any strong sentiment that we need to add more infiltration trench. It just I don't think it would help much in this circumstance. Okay. Uh, is there anything else, uh, John, other than that point that you noticed? No, I, don't, I don't think so. All right. So it looks like we'll end up closing the hearing on the thirteenth. Uh, if anything gets revised that uh, you, you decide to revise, uh, please uh, get, the, get the material to the commission earlier than that, obviously. Okay, I, I don't think I heard anything that the commission wants in addition. Um, 
Yeah, we didn't talk so. about trees, so I thought we I had made that point, and um, there wasn't any there wasn't any feedback on the you guys the conservation thinking the trees were acceptable at that short of height. I think we talked about it in the last meeting that. Um, so, um, you know, you Gail, do you have a comment on that? Gail, you're muted. Sorry, okay. uh, for trees to be planted as, as to be successful, um, it's really best not to plant large, uh, you know, really large trees. They they just don't do well on transplanting. It, it's really difficult to get them established. It's better to start with kind of you know smaller caliper trees um, that they they are able to send out roots and um, typically long better than large trees to put in. So you think it's okay, uh, Gail, the way it is? So it, it's always nice to have more, but, um, you know, we, uh, so there's like seven trees, right? Seven trees? That's what I see. One yeah, so, um, you mean, you, you need to give space for the trees to actually thrive. You don't want to overcrowd them. Um, and there's how many shrubs? 14. 14, that's quite a few, you know. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I don't. Spread out, all those shrubs are gonna, they're not, uh, you know, they, those shrubs grow, you know, four feet, um, a lot of those shrubs, and they all spread a few feet. Okay, so I think sixty trees back. That's not going to happen. <laughs> It'd be nice. Uh, and we also we also talked about that people have a right to cut uh, trees in their lawn. And what we do is we look at no disturb zone and wetlands where the trees have been cut. But we can't re we we don't have a, a policy of restricting people from cutting trees in their yard beyond what the twenty foot no disturb. Is that correct, John? Um, no, the, the commission can require one to one for any cutting in the buffer zone in the bylaw. I um, see. So it's a, it's totally discretional, discretionary. All right. So uh, with that input, do we, I mean the commissioners feel we need more trees beyond what's being planned. Is it? I don't think so. I don't know. I think, uh, in other words, are the six trees and 14 shrubs enough? No. I would like to see more trees on the yes. upland side. The only place, you know, if you put more trees, then where would you put them, I guess, is the question. If you, behind the last two trees in the wetland, I assume we want that three birds. We'd be putting the trees in the in the dry area where they were removed from. So one place you could put them is in the uh, the lawn area at the at the far back along the the, the Pleasant Street um, property boundary. Just, yeah. Just some right, yeah. yeah, right where somebody's right where Eileen is. Uh, Showing with their arrow, right in there. You could probably right, put where, um, a couple more, a couple more oaks or something in there. Right back where the, the lot of those stumps were removed. That'd be a good place. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, that would provide. Uh, someone mentioned having a vis visibility boundary. That a couple of trees would help with that. Yes, I, this is Andrew. I also agree with that. Yes. Right. Few trees. Well, Ryan, it seems like we have a request for two more trees at the very back. Uh, are you folks in agreement with that? Sure, we can we can do a couple more trees in the back. That's that's not a problem. All right. Okay. So uh, I think we ought to move this along then. So the uh, unless someone has something to say, the uh, next meeting will be August thirteenth, and it looks like we will uh, close the hearing and issue the permit at that time. That would be wonderful. Okay. Again, thank you everyone for your input. Right. Do we need to vote so, to continue? Right. Uh, yes. We should have a roll call. Is there a motion to continue this hearing? So moved. So August 13th. Okay, that's Bill. Second. 
Second. Second. This is Indra. All right, Don, how do you vote? Yes. Gail? Yes. Indra? Yes. Bill? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Ed? Yes. Uh, the chair votes yes, 700. Zero, zero. Okay, folks, we'll see you all on August 13th. Great. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you all. Okay. Uh, so the the next uh, the next item on the agenda is administrative stuff. Uh, John, do we have any planning board comments? Um, no. Okay. Uh, subcommittee and staff reports. Um, just it, there's no indication that we'll be going to um, in-person meetings at this point. Um, I don't. There's no talk of that yet. So um, certainly, I think August is going to be once again a virtual meeting. I was kind of hoping we had discussed um, earlier that maybe we'd be able to get in-person meetings. Um, it doesn't seem likely. Um, just FYI. All right. Okay. Uh, and in September, we'll be running into uh, early voting for the uh, for the state for, is the state, and then a federal election. So that, that could take up that room as well for weeks. Right. Okay. Uh, the next meeting, August thirteenth. The one after that is September tenth. Uh, other business. Do we have uh, a violation to talk about, John? Um, not really. I mean, I, I, I shared some information with you on some cutting on Ruthven, but I have a site visit scheduled uh, next Monday, so I'll fill you in on that afterwards. Okay. You, you sent a also, picture as well, or Eileen sent a picture. Yeah, I did. Also, um, I'm, I'm doing some more research on the 40 Westwood, and I'll probably put that on the agenda. That's the one you guys did a site walk with us uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yes. Uh, and I'll probably put that on for, as a discussion item for August as well. All right. Okay. Uh, anything, does anyone else have anything else? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Indra. Yes. I just want to, uh, I didn't understand what uh, Bill was talking about that uh, violation of that Pleasant Street, which is connected with that uh, 127 Bedford Street. Yeah, I, I was thinking we should be issuing a, uh, an enforcement order or a violation for that property as well. So that I think needs to be discussed or do we want to discuss about that more or if it's a violation for, then for the third, 13 Pleasant? Yeah. Yeah, I can put that on the August agenda. You know, we're back to back with the 127 Bedford here. Okay, good. And hopefully, like you said, uh, John, they'll come forth with a plan and we'll say, and you've already fixed it, you know? Yeah. Right. Right. That would be an that's easy a good point, Bill. Is you got that very good point. And I agree with that. Bill, your point about friendly enforcement would be nice if we could go that way. Uh, okay. So anything else? Nope. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting by anyone? So moved, Indra. Second, Jennifer. Okay. Second by Jennifer. Okay, uh, how do you vote on adjournment? John? <laughs> yes. Gail? Yes. Indra, are you sure? Yes, of course. <laughs> Bill? Yes. Uh, Jennifer? Yeah. How say you, Ed? Yes. <laughs> All right, and the chair absolutely votes yes. All right, hope everyone has a good evening. Stay safe, stay away from any COVID balls. Same. Yeah, just don't go to Texas or Florida. Uh, absolutely. Point well